Are you struggling with inconsistency? Maybe one game you're a ranked demon, but then the next game you move like a silver, you lose every jewel and you can't even hold a mouse. It's the most common problem for my students right now. If you follow what I'm about to show you in this video, you will improve. Steps in this routine will help you fix your inconsistent aim, stop you losing easy jewels and help you climb the ranks in Valorant. My name's Misfit and I was a pro for three different salaried European rosters and now I coach full time and make content all about improving at Valorant. So let's get into the tutorial. Step one is five minutes of elevated micro adjustments. This is the only task where you don't move at all. If you stand on top of this box, it adds a tiny bit of elevation and verticality to the task. Step two, 10 minutes of meta strafing. Meta strafing is the term that I use to refer to the way most high elo players take engagements. I call this the two bullet burst, strafe, two bullet burst. Spend 10 minutes killing the bots in two bullet bursts whilst counter strafing. The meta shooting style in Valorant revolves around accurate and precise bursts, meaning first bullet accuracy and movement is king. Not only do you need to be accurate, but a huge part of winning your duels is the ability to make somebody else miss. More often than not, shooting a two bullet burst will be your optimal choice because spraying is completely random after six bullets. The two bullet burst and strafe technique is your absolute bread and butter in high elo. Your goal is to master this technique and be in full control of your agent's movement. You should be using this technique for about 90% of your warm-ups and death matches because that's the amount of time that you should really be using this in ranked. You would never go into ranked and one-tap everybody. Some key things to note. We want to maintain 90 to 100% accuracy before increasing our speed. This is so important. A lot of people have a bad habit of aiming and shooting before they confirm they're on target. Not only this, but most students try to go at a faster pace than they're actually capable of, and that leads to developing bad habits with this technique. A great rule that's always helped me is just imagining going 10% slower than you need to go. You can use this technique in this routine, deathmatch, aim trainers, it works in all of them. Now, probably gonna get an aim coach who says, don't do that, but I can tell you from my experience, this works a lot. I find that when I go slower, not only am I more composed, I hit better shots, but I actually become more consistent. Something else that you definitely need to make sure you're doing is using wide and varied strafes. Every student that I review who does this warm up makes this key fundamental mistake. You need to make sure that you're varying up the distance of your strafes. The two bullet burst technique has no rhythm to it. You can do it as fast or as slow as you can shoot the bots. The problem occurs when students just go back and forth. So A, D, A, D, A, D, and they do tiny half steps because they're not over flicking enough on the bots. Make sure you're not going back and forth with tiny steps for 100% of this routine. Instead, you should be in full control of when you shoot, how big your strafes are, and you should be able to move in any direction that you want. Finally, let the keyboard do the work. Notice how I'm over aiming on the bots? Well, it's actually impossible to do this technique with any kind of flow if I'm too accurate when I flick to the bot. If I flick perfectly, then I can't move in between the technique. The second advantage of over aiming is that I can actually do the micro correction of the flick with my movement. This is huge for consistency as now, I'm micro correcting with my keyboard, which will always be more consistent than correcting with my mouse, which introduces human error. Hi guys, I just wanna pause the video for one second to ask you for a really big favor. I'm brand new to YouTube and it'd mean the world to me that if you got any value from this video at all, if you could leave me a like and a subscribe. I appreciate it a lot guys. Thank you very much and back to the video. Step three, smooth tracking for five minutes. Start by placing your crosshair on the bot's head, strafe around the bot whilst trying to keep it in the center. As you move in a circular motion around the bot, you'll eventually run out of mouse pad. And when this happens, you just simply go the other way. You would be so surprised at the amount of students that ask me this question. So here we are training the ability to keep our crosshair on the same point, And it's a very essential skill in Valorant and it should help us maintain a healthier and more consistent crosshair placement. The task itself seems quite easy, but it's actually quite hard at first. Stick with it and I guarantee it will help your aim, even if it feels like you're not actually doing anything. 
Personally, I do this task for about two to five minutes. Um, if you find this task really hard, you should aim for five to 10 minutes. It can be quite tedious, so make sure you don't aim for any unrealistic times. And this applies to all the routines. It's, it's super important that you can do this routine every day that you play Valorant. So you need to make sure the times that you set for yourself actually match what you can keep up with. Some people can do longer times. Some people can do short times. Step four, spray control and target switching for five minutes. For this step, you want to pick a bot in your mind, strafe onto the bot's head, stop, shoot, and then flick to another bot that you've already predetermined. Don't just randomly flick to the bots, you must flick to the one that you chose. Imagine this as one repetition and make sure that you're always moving in between repetitions. Don't be stuck in the mud. The movement in the strafe is just as important as hitting the flick. Try to make or choose bots that are closer together as opposed to bots that are further apart because this represents a more realistic in-game trading scenario. If you wanted to kill this guy but his friend's ready to trade him and it's a wide flick, then I can either try to hit an inconsistent flick before the enemy can click his mouse, which is quite hard, or I can kill this guy, then over aim on the other enemy, and then strafe onto his head. Now, not only is this a more consistent way of getting the kill, because wide, fast flicks are very inconsistent, but also we make the enemy have that chance of missing. Much more likely that I win this duel as opposed to hoping that the enemy can't click his mouse because his crosshair is already on my head. You can also throw in some basic spray control through this part. I'd suggest five minutes of target switching repetitions and five minutes of spray control with the Vandal Phantom or both. Step five, five minutes of close quarters combat meta strafing. This is pretty much the same task as step two, but instead we're doing it from a different location to simulate close quarters duels. So again, follow all the steps from step one, such as 100% accuracy, over aiming the bots, taking your time and trying to build up your own flow and fluidity. Okay, that's all the steps guys. If you perform these tasks in the way that I told you to, I almost guarantee that you will rank up and improve at Valorant. I know this because hundreds of my Metafy students have already done this and nearly all of them improve. So let me know how it goes and like and subscribe for more.